Prof, we'd like to ask, what is your reaction on the platforms that were presented by the candidates yesterday in the forum and which among them or um, which among those policy policies actually stood out to you most? You have to give credit to at least uh, our major candidates or president who showed up in yesterday's uh, forum sponsored by KBP because all of them in their own way or as they focused on their priorities, laid out program of government, a clear path of how they'd like to implement things or address issues in Philippine society if they get elected. The challenge now is beyond that, since this is just the start, maybe, or even we're not yet at the start of the campaign, it's good for media, for the public to read through all these proposals and ask for more details, because that's where we can best understand and learn from the candidates and make better choices. Mm -hmm. Professor, is there any policy that stood out to you most among the five? When you look at uh, things that they pushed for, generally, you can take note of what Vice President Leonard of Redder spoke of transparency, mm -hmm. because that cuts across any we need a government that needs to be more open, transparent, because we need government to be accountable for the action, which was followed up by Senator Manny Pacquiao with this strong stance on corruption that can best deal with economic challenges today. Noticeable also is what uh, Senator Laxon spoke <laughs> of, uh, what he calls timelines, specific timelines, days that he needs to execute things. It speaks of he's ready to take over the job. Or in the part of uh, Mayor Isco, focusing on his strength, really, which is he has been known as a mayor that executes things, especially during this pandemic time. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, it's not really the policy because they cut across, when you analyze it, they cut across similar concerns with the public because I think they're listening, they're talking to the public, and the public is basically telling us we're dealing with a continuing health crisis, but it's the economic consequences. Life is hard. Prices are getting higher. Jobs are not being created. So they're, they're providing their own answers to that. Even the collective, I think, agreement that there's a need for private sector under the PPP, which was emphasized more by Senator Ping Lacson and uh, Mayor Isco Moreno. Those are critical thoughts that we should take note of. But what we need is we really extract more from this candidate. Get the details of how they'll execute it. How will we fund? some of these initiatives that they're proposing. Mm -hmm. With that being said, Professor, you want to see more or hear more details from these candidates, perhaps in future forums or debates, yes? Yes, very important is the role, and I emphasize this, of mainstream media. Something unique in the 2022 election is the rise of the use of social media platforms. Facebook, YouTube is a dominant platform. The problem with that kind of platform, it's a one-way platform. You, did, you don't really get to understand the candidates. He's basically selling himself to us. But we're talking about six years of presidency, six years of governing and making decisions to over 110 million Filipinos. We cannot allow them to talk to us one way. We need to engage. And the public cannot engage them except through responsible mainstream media. And I hope that we can have more of this. And force candidates, make candidates attend, force them to answer questions. Then we can best really decide who, will, who should we choose. Sir, in your opinion, is there an advantage to having forums like what we had yesterday instead of one-on-one -on -one interviews? Uh, yes, because you're forced to deal with quick questions in front of each other, and you people will understand if you're simply not knowledgeable of an issue. Because key to this is that, because this is just a first step, knowledgeable of issues, has a plan to address this issue, the harder part is executing, which we will really not know mm -hmm. until they get elected and inaugurated into office. So we have to use all our efforts, especially with media, which is respectable in our country, respected by millions of Filipinos to play that role, to put pressure on candidates. 
not one on one that could be orchestrated uh, that that can be where where candidates are provided with advanced questions in this case no we need to extract more because that's when we can truly understand who these candidates are and what they really stand for professor with that being said um Former Senator Bongbong Marcos skipped the KBP's forum yesterday. How do you think this will affect his standing in the race? I think on the part of Senator Marcos, they strategically or tactically, they see of no value. That's true, possibly. But my challenge is to mainstream media. Let's forget about what Marcos or what Senator Marcos is doing. Mr. Marcos continues to communicate to voters through social media. And that basically undermines the role of mainstream, responsible uh, media because you have the discipline of fact-checking, editorial discipline of fact-checking. You don't simply accept you know, what is laid down to you. So for me, collectively, that's why KBP is a big step, and hopefully with the help of Comelec, really generate the participation of all major candidates. That's why I have this major candidates. Senator Marcos is a leading candidate. Let him explain to us his plans. And maybe we can make a good choice to back him or not. So that's very important. But it, it takes media because you are the one that can ask those questions in behalf of the Filipino people. Finally, Professor, the campaign season should be in full swing soon enough. Now, what can the public expect in the next coming months leading to the May 2022 polls? Candidates will continue, sad to say, I'll use the word, to sell themselves. We are that right candidate. But we need voters to be more discerning. But voters at times, even the realities of daily life, cannot be discerning. So media, an independent Mainstream media platforms like your network can provide a tool. We need to ask questions. We, go, we need to go deeper than what they propose as their programs. And we need, to, we need to share it, tell it to the general public. That's the important role. As, as other groups in Philippine society tries to put pressure on candidates to explain to them who they are really, but it's media that has a broader reach. That's what we need in Philippine society today. As we go into a different election season, where suddenly social media, which was simply introduced in 2016 in Philippine elections, might be the dominant. It has overtaken radio already. It has overtaken uh, newspapers already. They're a source of news based on our studies. We hope it doesn't overtake mainstream TV. Well, thank you, sir, for sharing with us your time and your insights. That's political expert Professor Dido Manhing.